everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode in our AI and You podcast series. Today is Friday, September 25th, 2020, and I'm your host, Vikar Saidi. I'm a computer scientist, an engineer, a lecturer, and a consultant. I'm also the author of several books. My most recent book is about artificial intelligence and is titled The Genome Affair. The Genome Affair is a work of speculative fiction. It examines what the world might be like if some of the more extraordinary capabilities forecast to be realized in AI over the next 20 to 30 years were actually realized today. Given the growing list of frightening existential threats humankind now faces, the book pays particular attention to the impact AI is expected to have on world affairs. The book is available in ebook format for those who prefer to read on a digital device, but it's also available in a high quality paperback edition. The Genome Affair is available on Amazon, so I hope you'll take the time to read it and to leave a review. Book reviews are very helpful for writers. I'm available to give talks on artificial intelligence and its related technologies, and on the impact AI is expected to have on our world. If you'd like to get in touch with me to arrange a web-based event or consulting meeting with your company or organization, you can find my contact info in the podcast notes below. And now, on to today's podcast. In our last podcast, episode 10, I talked about the serious implications for artificial intelligence and its related technologies as China and the West continue to decouple and how this might impact our world. In today's podcast, episode 11, I'll be talking about ethics, law, and society as it relates to artificial intelligence. Let's get started. Artificial intelligence-enabled social media has had many positive impacts on society and on the world. It has reconnected geographically distant family members and has fostered and nurtured meaningful new relationships in people's lives. But at the same time, there have been many unintended consequences. In fact, if there is one phrase that best characterizes the concern so many in society feel regarding AI-enabled social media, it is unintended consequences. These unintended consequences have manifested themselves in numerous ways during the past decade, and it is increasingly likely that this will be the case as AI proliferates throughout society. Additionally, It is likely to become even more serious as we transition to the general artificial intelligence and further yet when we reach super AI. Many leading voices involved in researching AI and social media, including many who formerly held senior roles inside the Silicon Valley technology industry, have unequivocally stated that AI-enabled social media is deliberately designed to addict people from all segments of society, including those that are the youngest and therefore most vulnerable. Even the architects of these AI-enabled social networks and their families are struggling with social media addiction. Since 2011 and onwards, physicians and hospitals are witnessing surging levels of anxiety depression, and non-critical self-harm amongst American teens and preteens. Preteen hospitalizations have increased by 190%, while suicides have increased by over 150%. This is unprecedented. These preteens, or Gen Z kids, are the first generation to have been on social media since middle school and are now requesting their faces and bodies be altered to look like a Snapchat filtered selfie. 
AI is also shaping our culture and politics. We are witnessing lynch mobs in India and genocide in Burma as large numbers of disenfranchised people are incited to burn and destroy property and to commit atrocious acts of violence by fake news spreading rapidly across social media. Today, every individual on these social media apps is entitled to their own reality and their own set of facts. Truth is no longer a consideration as billions of people log into social media to hear and see what they want to hear and see. And in return, they provide their personal data, which tech companies later monetize. This vicious cycle is resulting in the visible disintegration of the very fabric of American democracy, and it is polarizing societies around the world, with Facebook alone impacting the lives of 2.7 billion users. Users. I used the word users. The Yale University computer science professor, Edward Tuft, recently pointed out that there are only two industries that call their customers users, the illegal drug industry and the software industry. Users, indeed. It may take time before people realize that if they're not paying for a product or service that they are consuming, then they are, in point of fact, the product themselves. Social media is designed to keep us engaged and to gradually shape us so the vendors of these networks can profit from us. Tech companies monetize us by demonstrating to advertisers that ads shown to us are increasingly having positive outcomes. Surveillance capitalism requires enormous amounts of data so that the individual profiles generated by predictive analytics algorithms can continuously be refined. This data can only be gathered by developing strategies and tactics that will keep us engaged and interactive for increasingly longer periods of time each day. The result of surveillance capitalism is that the leading technology companies are now the richest enterprises in the history of humanity. They have achieved this wealth by gathering more information about humankind that was previously possible in history. These companies are increasingly more and more accurate and precise in predicting what we are going to do and in predicting how we are feeling. Much like magicians have done for centuries, they are exploiting vulnerabilities in our psychology that we are unaware of. But they are doing so for many hours a day, across geographies and across billions of people, by incorporating strategies of persuasion in their AI agents and social media technologies. Sooner rather than later, we must realize that social media isn't a tool. It is, in fact, an addictive Machiavellian AI agent that is designed to manipulate us. This AI agent has its own goals, and it has its own strategies to pursue and fulfill these goals. Humankind, with its Paleolithic brain, organized around and protected by medieval institutions, is regularly tempted to face godlike artificial intelligence running on the fastest and most sophisticated computer networks on the other side of their mobile phone screen. In this scenario, it's quite obvious who will dictate the outcome. A recent MIT study found that salacious fake news travels six times faster than true news. Disinformation is very profitable once amplified by social media companies, and it's a very effective tool of control in the hands of authoritarian regimes. 
Manipulation of public opinion via fake news in Myanmar led to the burning of homes and villages, rape, murder, genocide, and nearly one million refugees. It seems the tech industry has unwittingly created the tools to destabilize and erode the very fabric of society around the world. Society no longer agrees on what is true. If we remain on this trajectory, we are heading for civil war. But the business model is so extraordinarily lucrative that it is nearly impossible to change. As previously mentioned, the implementation of this model has created the most valuable companies in human history. Today, people are still caught up in popular 18th to 20th century debates about which races or communities amongst humankind are the most intelligent. The truth is that if we plot all humans on a bell curve, almost everyone will be on the same chart. That is to say, there is some variance, but not that much. The real discussion sensible people ought to be having is regarding artificial intelligence versus human intelligence. Today, a narrow AI agent specialized in playing chess can play and defeat the top 50 players in the world with 100% probability, and it can do so while playing all 50 players simultaneously. Humans are limited in their ability to increase their intelligence. Their brain must fit inside their skull, and this is unlikely to change in the foreseeable future. Human brains are also limited by the biochemical reactions that enable neurotransmitters to send signals between neurons in our neural network. Today, the speed of the silicon-based processors in computers is one million times faster than that of the human brain. AI agents running on these computers can process more information in a week than a human brain can process in 20,000 years. Even if we use brain-machine interfaces such as those developed by Neuralink, we are limited by the biochemical limitations of our neurotransmission capability and also by the rate at which we can receive information. In August of 2020, scientists at University College London demonstrated data rates of 178 terabits per second, a data rate fast enough to download the entire US Netflix library in less than one second. Following the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833, the GDP of the British Empire was reduced by 2% per year for each of the next 60 years. The 1865 Emancipation Proclamation in the U.S. had a similar effect on the economy of the American South. Thus, Western society has previously shown its ability to do the right thing and reject an extremely lucrative business model, even at the cost of tremendous self-inflicted economic harm. It is likely that trying to decommission this 21st century predictive analytics-based business model that has enriched big tech today like no previous time in history will also have a devastating microeconomic and macroeconomic impact. However, we must keep in mind that the techniques and processes required to acquire and retain human attention and then manipulate individuals and entire societies through AI-enabled social media has now spread widely and is being used by bad actors for various nefarious purposes. All of this will be much more difficult to contain. Thank you for spending some time with me. I'm trying to follow the TED Talk format 
and so I'm keeping these podcasts to about 20 minutes. Let me know what you think. I hope you'll find these insights into artificial intelligence helpful, and I hope you'll read my new book, The Genome Affair. It's on Amazon. Until next time, then, this has been the AI and You podcast with author Vikar Saidi.